here's our first example using u substitution with a definite integral. It also happens to be our first example of doing u substitution with a radical, with the square root of something other than just x. So a couple of firsts on this example. The definite integral, at least at first, isn't going to really cause too much issue. Because remember, the definite integral just means that at the very end of the whole problem, you're going to plug in the limits of integration. So we can ignore them to begin with do the whole process, and at the very end when we found our answer, we can plug in the limits of integration and subtract according to the fundamental theorem. So really we're going to focus on that square root part to begin with. So it should be clear that the form we're looking at is the integral of the square root of u, which is the same thing as u to the one half, turns out to be u to the three halves, divided by 3 halves, or 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Okay, so the square root of u, when you take the antiderivative or the integral, you get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. So we want to replace the whole 2x plus 1 with u, which means that du would be 2 dx. As we've done many times, we have u ready to be replaced, but what's left is just dx. We don't have this 2 anywhere, so we're going to divide it uh, just to solve for dx, the part that we do have. So we have 1 half du equals dx. Which means that when we substitute, we have the antiderivative of the square root of u, or u to the 1 half, times 1 half du. And I'm moving kind of quickly over the substitution because we've done plenty of examples to this point. But if you need to, you can pause and make sure that all those pieces make sense and that everything is still clear. We can also rewrite this as 1 half u to the 1 half. And then we know the answer for that antiderivative. That would be the 1 half gets carried along for the ride. And then the u to the 1 half gets replaced with 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Now, of course, we can combine those fractions, 1 half times 2 thirds, the 2's cancel, and we get 1 third u to the 3 halves plus c. Except that in this case, we don't really need the plus c, right? Because we're doing a definite integral. So we can ignore that. And once we come back and get our answer in terms of x, then we can plug in our limits of integration, which are 0 to 4. There's one common mistake with this, though, and that is it's easy to forget to come back and plug in the limits of integration. If you drop off these limits and you go all the way to the end, it's easy to get lost in your work and you get to this point and you can box that in as your answer and walk away and forget that you had some limits to deal with. So we'll talk about that in a second in one way to avoid making that mistake. But for now, we're going to finish out the problem. We're going to plug in 0 and 4. Now this 3 halves power might look intimidating, but just remember that a 3 halves power, a fraction like this, just means the 3 on top means that you're going to go up 3 powers. In other words, you're going to cube your answer. And then the 2 on the bottom means you're going to go down 2 powers, meaning you're going to take the square root. So you're going to cube something and then take the square root of the answer. It turns out you can also flip the order. You can take the square root first and then cube your answer, which makes it easier because you're working with smaller numbers. You first square root and get a small number and then cube it, which is easier to do than cubing and then taking the square root of that bigger number. Okay, so let's try it carefully. When we plug in 4, we get 1 third times 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9 to the 3 halves. When we plug in 0, 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1 to the 3 halves. Now conveniently one of them is 1 to a power and 1 to anything is just 1 so we don't actually have to do any work there. That second half is just going to be 1 third times 1. When we're working with 9 to the 3 halves, remember we want to take the square root and then cube our answer. So we start with the square root of 9 which is 3 and then we cube that and if you cube 3, 
3 to the third power, you get 27. So this is going to be 1 third times 27. So you get 27 over 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 26 over 3. Now I should be clear here, and I'll mention this more later on, but when you take a test in this class, if you get to the point where you're at something like this, and you're struggling to remember how to do this mental math, don't let that be what trips you up. You can just leave that as your answer. Don't, don't make a mistake or spend a lot of time doing arithmetic when what we're focusing on really is the calculus. So make sure you can integrate and you can plug in the limits of integration, but if you can't simplify from there, don't worry about it. You can leave your answer in the unsimplified form on a test. On the homework, of course, you want to simplify because you can use a calculator or your computer, etc., to simplify those arithmetic statements. Okay, so that's your answer. The main key there was that we did a square root. We did a radical, which we haven't done before. But it's the same exact process as always. We pick out our u to fit the standard form, and then we find du. We substitute, we integrate, and we substitute back. But I mentioned that if you drop off these limits of integration to begin with and just work with the indefinite integral, it can be easy to forget to come back to them. So let me show you another way to do this same problem. So we're going to set up the same problem, the integral from 0 to 4, etc. We already know that u will be 2x plus 1 and du will be 2 dx, or in other words, 1 half du equals dx. So our substitution happens the same way as before. Nothing has really changed to that point. Okay. It turns out when we make our substitution, we can actually take the limits with us. And that will save us in a couple of ways. Number one, it will save us from this mistake of forgetting to come back and plug in the limits of integration. Number two, it will actually save us some time because rather than having to simplify here at the end, we're going to kind of front load that simplification. We're going to do that simplification at the beginning. And I'll show you what I mean. If we're going to take the limits with us, we can't just put 0 and 4 here. Why not? In the original integral, the integral is with respect to x, which means our variable is x. We integrate with respect to x. And it also means that these limits are values of x. Think back to when you started doing integrals and you looked for the area under a curve, your limits of integration are actually values along this x-axis. They're actually values of x. What you probably haven't seen to this point, but you can do just the same, is if you have a function like this, you can actually find an area here by taking an integral with respect to y, which might seem a little quirky to begin with, but just like back in Calc 1 you learned how to do Riemann sums by splitting this into vertical rectangles, you can actually draw horizontal rectangles with a height delta y, which turns into dy. So you can actually do an integral with respect to y, and in that case, your limits of integration are y values, values on the y-axis. Now, we'll stick a pin in that, and we'll come back to that later on when we start doing areas and volumes in a little more detail. So if that didn't make any sense, don't worry about it. We'll see it in more detail later on. My point here is, that these limits are values of x. So we can't just write them as they were on an integral in terms of u. We need to write the equivalent values of u that match those. So think carefully for a second about what values of u correspond to 0 and 4. You can pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer. But if we're looking for the value of u that corresponds to 0, for instance, we're going to use this same definition of u that we started with. In other words, we're asking, what is u when x is 0? In other words, substitute x equals 0 into this side of the equation and find out what u is. And you should find out pretty easily that u is 1 in that case. And then if you do the same thing with 4, <clears throat> 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9. Now, if you notice, those are the same values we got here and here at the end of last problem. So we're doing the exact same work, it turns out. We're just doing it at different parts of the process. We're moving that step of the problem up to the very beginning 
and that saves us a little bit of work at the end of the problem, and it also saves us from forgetting to do the limits of integration at all. Now if we do this, it turns out we don't actually have to come back to x at the end. When we take this integral and we get 1 half times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, or 1 third u to the 3 halves, we can plug in the limits of integration right here without coming back to x. So it saves us that step as well. And we can immediately write 1 third times 9 to the 3 halves minus 1 third times 1 to the 3 halves, which again is exactly what we had right here. We just got there in a one fewer step. And then of course we write the same thing we did last time, and the answer is exactly the same. So I wanted to show you that example just to show you that there's a, a couple of different ways you can handle a definite integral with u substitution. You can either do the whole problem and come back to x and then plug in your limits of integration, or you can actually carry the limits of integration with you into the u universe and apply the limits there without ever having to come back to x. So if you need to, you can look back at these examples a couple of times and make sure that it makes sense. But I just wanted to show you that in case it comes in handy.